Hey, and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to clear the air about how to configure your AI agents. We'll go through the different ways that you can do this and go through the code so you understand it. Well, what do I mean by AI agent configuration? Every AI agent needs to take in a config list of properties, which tells it what base URL, what model, and if we're using OpenAI's API, we need to give it an API key. These may not need used simultaneously all the time, but we need to fill them in depending on the situation. Well, Autogen offers five different ways to retrieve the configuration for our AI assistants. The AOAI and the from models are very similar, so I'm gonna combine them and just use the AOAI, which leads us to using a total of four functions from Autogen, and we'll go over these examples and we'll need to create other files to get the config from. Let's get started. Now, I don't personally use all of these. I use one the most, which I'll go over at the end, but I wanna walk you through the steps of how each of them work. The first one is autogen.getconfig list. And all this takes is a few parameters. So if we actually open this up, we see that the function takes in API keys, base URLs, API type, and API version. The one that it absolutely needs is the API keys. And this is just a list of keys for your open AI API calls. So coming back here, the API keys, you know, this will be a list. So this will be some SK, some alphanumeric random number that you'll get from open AI. And then for the base URLs, if you're using something like LM Studio or Olama, then you'll put the local host here. And for the API type, this will almost always be open AI, unless you're doing something different, but then make sure you you just get the correct API type, like if you're using Azure. And then if you want to, you can give a specific API version. And then what we're gonna say is config list equals, where config list is just a variable, autogen.getconfiglist, which is the function from autogen, and then just pass in all of these variables. And then I have a print statement at the end just to verify that the config list that we gave into the function is properly printing out all of the properties. All right, so if I run this, right here's the output. So we have the API key that I put in here, the base URL, the API type, and then the API version. All right, so this is the first way, and this is probably the most basic way. Let's move on to the next example. So for the next Autogen function, we have config list open AI, AOAI, which again, that stands for Azure's open AI. And this is more specific if you are going to be using Azure as part of the project. You say config list against the variable name equals list open AI, AOAI. And this takes in certain things, and this is, looks a little different, right? The first parameter is the key file path. And this is where we wanna start looking for folders where these text files are. And that's what's the difference here is that these take text files and in each text file, we have a specific property. And what I've done here is I've created a text subfolder with all of these files in here. The first one here is OpenAI API key file. And I set this to the text slash key underscore OpenAI dot text file. So in this text folder, it'll look for key underscore open AI dot text. If we open this up, this is basically just an API key. That's all it is. We don't have to actually give a property, like we don't say API key equals, and then the value, you just get the value here. That's it. And then if we look at to another one, the next one for Azure's API key file, this is stored under slash text key underscore AOAI dot text. So if we look at this one, Again, this would just be where you put your Azure API key, and that's it. And it's the same thing for the other two properties. And then they have this exclude property here where you can say, okay, we want to exclude Azure's, any of Azure's AI uh, text properties. So we're only gonna look at the OpenAI's key and the OpenAI's base. Okay, now if I print this out, because I said to exclude Azure's OpenAI information, we only have the API key for OpenAI and the base URL for OpenAI. And then we would pass this into the AI agent, and then it would use this information to talk to the model. The next two I'll go over are used more often. Let's start going over those. For the next example, we're going to be using config list from .env. And this is a more common approach. And I just want to clarify the .env. This is literally saying as a pe like period .env. So the first thing you would need to do in order to use this is create a file named .env. So if we go ahead and open this up here, over here on the left, I already made it. So if we open this up, there are a couple things here. We have an open AI API key, which is the exact property name that you need for this. And then if you had any other API key that was needed, you would put this here as well, right? So now we have the property name equals, and then the value for that property. Now back in our Python file, we're gonna say config list equals autogen.configlist from .env. The first parameter is the .env file path. So all you have to do is say .env, and that's because this is on the same file path in the same directory as the Python file. And the next is a model API key map. 
how this works is you could list out multiple models here. You could have 20, 30 different models here. And for each model, you would basically give the property name of the API key that would be stored in the .env file. So for instance, GPT-4, it's going to use the API key with the OpenAI API key property name. So back over here, it should use the sk-openai-11111. I think that was the correct amount of ones. I don't know. And for something a little more complex, like the 3.5 turbo model, to use the correct API key, you actually have to give it this different property name, API key env variable. And then you'll give it the name of the actual property in the .env file. So if we go back over there, we should return the SK another API key. And then you can give it an API type and you can give it a base URL. And again, if you're using something like Olama or LM Studio, you would put the URL here of your local host. And then we have something called filter dictionary. So this model API key map is a dictionary of values, of model values really. For the filter dictionary, you would say, which model do I wanna use from this key map? And so if you wanna filter it out by the model, you'd say 3.5 turbo. So if I were to print the config list, it should print out all the information for the 3.5 turbo model. All right, when we print this out, we get the correct information. So for the 3.5 turbo model, we had the API key. It got the property name, another API key from the .env file, which was SK, another API key. Now don't get hung up on this says API underscore key. For whatever reason, they renamed this to API key environment variable, but this is pointing to the same property. And then we have the base URL, which is the same, the API type and the API version. Then it gives us the model, which this is the 3.5 turbo model. Now I switched this to the GPT-4 model, reran it, and then it only gave us the API key and the model, which is, if we scroll back up, that's all we had here, the, the model, and then the API key, which was the SK OpenAI, lots of ones. All right, for the last one, this is the one I use the most in almost all my projects now. And this is the config list from JSON. The first thing it requires is to create another file. So we're gonna create an OAI underscore config underscore list dot JSON file. If we open this up, this is just a JSON file of different properties. So let's look at it. The first one is we have the model. So this one's gonna be for GPT-4. The API key, you just insert your API key here. If you have a base URL, you can use that here. And then we can have another set. So we have another model, 3.5 turbo, a different API key. This time you might have an API version. And then you have another base URL, maybe if that's what you need. Now how this works is we say config list from JSON. For the first parameter, you'll say env or file. And this is just saying, what is the file name or where is it located? And then just like the last example, you can say filter dictionary and then which model you want to use in case you had multiple. And we did, we had two different ones. So for this case, we want to use the 3.5 turbo model properties. And then just have another example here where I give it the same environment or file and the filter dictionary. And this one is going to use the GPT-4. And the reason I have two, because in this example, I also have two different models. I have two assistant agents and I'm passing in different config lists to each agent. And this is how, if you wanted to have multiple agents and you want them to use different models, like maybe you want to have one local open source model, then you could do it this way. You just pass in the config list to the LL config property for each agent. Also, just a heads up, it looks like the API underscore version doesn't work anymore. So just go ahead and remove that from the JSON file. Now, whenever we run this, the first one we print out is the GPT-4 model, the costly config list. So this will be all the GPT-4 information. So you have the GPT-4 API key and then the base URL. And then for the cheap model, we have the 3.5 turbo, the API key for that one, and then another base URL. And this is the one I use the most. This is the one I would probably recommend to use because it's less code in the Python file. You can separate it out into a separate JSON file. All right, thank you for watching. I hope this clarified if you had any questions or concerns about how to use the configuration with your AI agents. In the last example, we saw how you can use different config lists for different agents so that you can have different model sources. So if you had something from local open source, but then at the end, you still want to use GPT-4 for the final LLM call, this is how you do it. This is day five of releasing a video every day of this month. Please like and subscribe and follow me along on this journey for all this information that I'll be releasing for this month. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next video.